Hi everyone, and welcome back to another session of Geek Out with Perry. In the last video, we had discussed exchange archiving, and that hot topic has raised a few questions which I know I'd like to hear Perry's answers to. So let's get to geeking out. So in the first video, you talked about managing storage efficiently. So does tiered storage, or in other words, putting your archive mailbox and your primary mailbox in two different sets of storage, does that help you manage your storage efficiently? Sure. So we think that the primary reason people want uh, think about using uh, tiered storage approaches is to reduce their costs. The idea is if I put my uh, primary data on the expensive storage and my less important data on my uh, less expensive storage, I can actually save money. We think that in almost all cases that isn't true. We're, we do support the scenario, and our customers, there's some customers are very passionate about it, but we actually don't think that it actually adds up to cost savings. Here's why. If you buy a great big disk drive, terabyte, two terabyte drives are going to be available, um, even three, four terabytes before Exchange 2010 um, stops getting deployed uh, over its lifespan. And you put only the hot primary data on it, you're not going to fill it up. Okay. Okay. So now you're going to have an empty disk drive that is I.O. constrained. Okay. Okay. So that's your tier one. Over here on your tier two, you're going to have another big disk drive. And it is going to be full. So you're going to fulfill it all up with content. And it's not going to be particularly I.O. bound because the old data doesn't get access very yeah. often. There isn't that much traffic on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, in the end, you've now bought two disk drives, one of which is 90% uh, empty, and the other one is 90% full. You now bought 180% of the amount of storage you, you would need to buy if you had combined the two. Yes, you'd have to buy on your tier one, maybe 10 or 20% more total storage, mm -hmm. but uh, compared to the cost of having deployed um, two different systems, um, adding 10 or 20% on this side is way cheaper in almost every case than uh, deploying in this site. Now, I think one thing to stress is this is a, not a SAN versus DES, DES story. This uh, story is exactly the same for SANs. Um, you're spending a large amount of money on the frame, and you can populate that frame with very large, dense disk drives. Mm -hmm. If you do that, um, that is the cheap way of deploying SANs, and with a single SAN deployment, you can support your entire uh, exchange deployment and co-locate your archives and your, your storage. If your people really want to be cost effective, what they need to be thinking about in reality is having a scale out model so that they can thin provision at the beginning and add storage as your archive grows. Okay. Okay? Um, that's the, 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 the kind of thing that actually does uh, reduce cost because as you grow your system um, and you buy storage down the road, um, on year one, you may be buying uh, disk drives that are one terabyte. In year two, two terabytes. In year three, three and four terabyte drives. And the cost will, per bit will have dropped by factors of two and four over the lifespan of that storage. So instead of buying all of your storage up front, if you really want to be cost effective, you want to have a single deployment and add storage as you go along and as those uh, mailboxes and archives grow in parallel. And then because you're getting to use all the I.O. of this system plus all the I.O. of this system at the same time, okay. you get a better user experience. So okay. all up, independent of whether you decide you want to do SANS or DAS, uh, co-locating your hot and cold data is the way that's going to come up with the lowest cost story. So a popular implementation for archiving is stubbing, or basically replacing messages in a user's mailbox with links to the actual message being somewhere else, like an archive. So why don't we use stubbing or some type of similar technology for our archive solution in Exchange 2010? OK, so this is uh, another variation on the tiered storage theme. Only in this case, even the cold data is kind of a good chunk of it has moved out. In principle, all they're leaving is the set of indexes and records for the message. Right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because that's where all of our I/O happens on. It's on the uh, the header uh, row in our in our in our uh, in our tables, plus the indexes on those things. So there's, there's still the same number of items in our store, just none of the bodies. So now instead of having to deploy um, when you're using 10 or 20 percent of your storage, you're going to use like three or four or five percent of the storage, and most of the storage has moved on to this this other tier. So you're even more I/O bound here, and you have to deploy even more space out here, right? Um, so it's an extreme form of that tiered storage story that we were just 
okay. talking about. Worse, because you've done that, now you need to deploy software on every single one of your clients to make the story come together. Essentially, you've created this Frankenstein message that is uh, the combination of a header row here and a body in uh, uh, a storage that's not in exchange. It's the client up here, right, in Outlook. Um, so, you know, you got Outlook code, and then there's, you've got to deploy a little piece of software that sits below Outlook that then pulls the data on each Outlook request from two different places. Okay. You have to deploy that software on every single client. You have to keep it up to date when every change of Outlook or any change of the, of the archive uh, scenario. Plus, um, this only works for every client you've actually deployed this on. If you have other types of clients, you need special stubs for those things as well. Like if you have phones that are deployed or uh, um, you, Outlook Web Access doesn't, isn't going to work in this scenario, um, or uh, you know, Pine clients and that sort of thing. They all need their own special purpose stub to pull these messages together. Mm -hmm. So we think this is a very convoluted, difficult to manage, um, process to try and uh, solve this problem. And in the end, it doesn't uh, reduce your costs. In fact, it dramatically raises them. So stubbing kind of archive solutions, we think, are really problematic. If you really want to move the data out of Exchange, I think it's very reasonable to have an archive solution that doesn't have end user access to it. Okay. Right? Um, the point at which and it's, the data is either fully in Exchange or fully out of Exchange. Um, and that's um, for scenarios in which are truly are regulatory archives. Right? Okay. Thanks for watching this episode of Geek Out with Perry. Please leave us comments and ask additional questions, and we'll try to follow up in blog posts or with more videos over the next few weeks. Thanks for geeking out.